And now I'll go to Mr. Barletta for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, even though members of both the House and the Senate offered long-term solutions to our highway trust fund shortfalls, it is irresponsible that neither the House nor the Senate has worked on serious reforms. We have not adjusted the user fee for our infrastructure in 20 years or considered innovative revenue streams. Instead, we have spent valuable time searching for short-term gimmicks. We should not be robbing the banks, homeowners, or customs to pay for our roads and bridges. This is fiscally irresponsible. At some point, we have to say enough is enough. That time has come. We need a long-term, robustly funded bill. I am hopeful that this bill will provide communities the tools that they need to invest in America's infrastructure. I was happy to work with Chairman Schuster and Ranking Member uh, DeFazio on important roadway safety issues, such as preventing heavier trucks from driving on our local roads and ensuring that we fully fund the Highway Safety Improvement Program. This program invests in infrastructures like guardrails, rumble strips, and retro-reflective signs. While you'll never read in the headline in your newspaper, Rumble Strips Save Family of Four, this program saves lives every day and for that reason alone should not face the cuts in the Senate bill. Additionally, the House bill includes common sense provisions I champion to make sure farm vehicles are not regulated like long haul trucks. It makes crude oil being transported by freight rail safer and gives first responders more time to react in the unlikely event of a derailment. Finally, many of the policy ideas that I introduced in the Safer Trucks and Buses Act were incorporated. It is critical that flawed safety scores are not publicly displayed for buses and trucks. Investing in infrastructure is good for the local economy and good for America, and I commend the committee. Thank you. Thank you.